I picked up this old mirror at a garage sale a few years ago and it's kind of been hanging around. I'm finally going to take a day and make a frame for it. Now the reason why I bought the mirror is because it has a beveled edge. I don't know if you can see that, but also the mirror is not in great shape. There's a lot of imperfections behind the glass because it's old, but that's what I like about it. It's, I think it's going to look pretty cool once I make the frame and distress the frame so it looks like an antique. Now the first step is going to be to remove the mirror from the frame and then I can measure it and make a subframe. Okay, well the good news is the mirror is out in one piece. Unfortunately, there was no nothing interesting behind the mirror. Sometimes you'll find old newspaper clippings and uh, things like that, but there was nothing here. So, but the mirror is out, and now I'm going to measure the mirror, and it's 20 by 18. So I'm going to make a subframe with an opening that's 20 to 16th by 18 and the 16th. I'm making the subframe out of three quarter inch plywood and this just happens to be cherry because it was a piece of scrap hanging around the shop. Now, what I'm doing is basically it's like a face frame. I'm making a square and I'll use my biscuit joiner to join the frame together and I'll let that set up overnight because it's almost the end of the day. And then tomorrow I'll come in and make molding on the table saw and then just dress up the subframe. And again, I'm just calling it a subframe. It's basically a foundation so I can build up all of the decorative moldings. day and I should add that it didn't take me all day to build the subframe yesterday uh, it was the end of the day and I wanted to glue it up so today I could then work on it this is the plan for the frame I'm about to build and you'd have to imagine that this is a section of the frame cut out so you're seeing it from the I guess you would call it the end or the end grain now this piece right here represents the subframe that I just put together and the first piece of molding I'm going to make is this piece right here. I'm gonna make that out of MDF. I just set the blade on the table saw for a seven degree angle. Then I bought my fence in to five sixteenths and now I'm going to rip that angle on my piece of molding and that will be the piece of molding for the inside of the frame. The molding that I just made measures one inch across and since I want a quarter inch overhang to catch the mirror I'm going to use a scrap piece of the plywood that measures three quarters of an inch and use that as a guide to make a line. Now when I go to cut my miter, I'll use the outside line, or I'll use that line for the outside mark of the miter cut. 
The nice thing about having a sacrificial board on your chop saw is you can line your cut lines up with the kerf that's cut into the sacrificial board. And that just makes things go a lot faster and it's a lot easier. Well, now that this piece of molding has been made and attached to the frame, I'm moving on to this piece right here, and this measures a half of an inch by three eighths. And again, I'm going to make that out of MDF. Well now I'm ready to move on to this little piece of bead molding and again I'm going to use the table saw. I'm just changing the blade in the table saw to a bead molding cutting head. This is what the cutting head looks like and if you'd like to know a little bit more about how to make bead molding I'll put a link right here. For the bead molding I'm using poplar wood and the only reason why the wood is primed is because these are scraps or cutoffs from a trim job I just did. The next piece of molding I'm going to make is this piece on the back of the frame here. And this measures two inches by three quarters of an inch. And again, I'm going to make that out of MDF. To make the molding for the back of the frame, I've already ripped three quarter inch MDF to two inch strips. And now I've adjusted my fence to an inch and three quarters. And I've tilted the saw blade to 35 degrees. When I attach this piece of molding, the two inch piece of molding that I just cut, I want a half inch reveal in the back of the frame. And that allows the frame to hang very tight to the wall. Now there's a little trick to getting this half inch reveal where you don't have to measure. I like to use a piece of half inch plywood to prop the frame that I'm working on up. And what that does is as I attach the molding around the frame, you can see that I have a perfect half inch gap. And so that will be my half inch reveal. With the frame flipped over, you can see how there's a perfect half inch reveal going all the way around the frame. And a really nice thing about that is if you decide you want to hang the frame using the French cleat system, there's more than enough room to do that. Well, finally we get to the tricky part and maybe the most interesting part, and that's this molding in the center. Uh, it's like a valley between the two moldings. And it looks a little bit like a dental molding, but it's different. What I'm doing is I'm going to cut an angle on a piece of molding and then cross cut them and reverse them. So you have one angle going this way, then going that way, this way, that way, this way all the way around the frame. Again, I'm going to use MDF for this molding and the first step is to cut strips at an inch and five sixteenths. And that's the distance between these two moldings. I've already ripped the MDF to an inch and five sixteenths. The next step is to raise the blade, tilt the angle to seven degrees and move my fence over to five sixteenths and run the material through the saw again. That will be the molding. Once I finish cutting all the molding, I then 
marked the line on the molding at an inch and five sixteenths, went over to the chop saw, and then put a line on the cutting table. And now I'm cutting blocks, and then just putting the blocks in the channel here, or the valley, in the opposite order. Now I'm anticipating a problem, which is the spacing won't be perfectly even. And I'll show you what my solution is for that when I get there. So this is the problem. The blocks are going to be heavy by about 3 16th. So what I'm going to do is take a few blocks and take a 16th off of, say, three blocks, and then just bury them in the line here, and the naked eye will really never see them. And then that'll give me a perfect run of molding, and I'll just use that same solution as I work my way around the frame. These are the lines that I've drawn on the sacrificial chop saw table, or the board that is sacrificial. Now, this center line is an inch and five sixteenths. So if I want my molding to be a little bit heavy or a little bit light, I can put it at either line. So now since I need three pieces of molding that are a little bit light, I'll just push the molding up to that one line, I'll cut those three, and that should be perfect. And since the blocks are only a sixteenth of an inch lighter than the original ones, it's really hard to see them. But what I'll do is I'll take them out and spread them along the line, and that way it'll be even more difficult. But, oops, that one's not right. Okay, and that looks like it's going to work out fine. And I'll just do the same thing as I work my way around the frame. I worked my way around the frame, and then I numbered all the blocks and put a corresponding number on the edge of the frame. Now I'm going to glue them in place. The next step is to paint the frame, but that's next week, so I hope you'll tune in and check that out. Uh, please subscribe, leave a comment, like me on Facebook. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next time.